to this video about MCT calculation. At the end of this video you will know all the basic metrics of MCT and how to calculate them. This is not very difficult, but the way of thinking is just a little bit different from traditional lean. Therefore, we start with explaining the calculation in calendar time. We will also discuss an MCT-based metric that helps to motivate MCT reduction, known as the QRM number. Thereafter, we delve into the calculation of the gray space. This becomes more difficult when there is, for example, simultaneous labor input. Therefore, we will also learn how to deal with this. Finally, we introduce a tool that assists MCT calculation called Little's Law. So, we start with the calculation of calendar time. Customers view delivery in terms of a calendar date. For this reason, MCT should also be measured in real time and not in working time. However, it could be possible that you collect your data based on working time. If this is the case, you should convert this data into calendar time first. There is a simple rule that you can use. Your MCT portion is the raw data hours times 7, these are the weekdays, so your real time, divided by the weekly working hours. To give an example, if data collection shows you that the working time is 8 hours and the machine works 40 hours per week, you can use these numbers to fill the formula. Then, the gray space for this operation would be 8 times 7 divided by 40 is 1.4 days. Then, we go to the next measure that makes use of a formula, and this is the QRM number. The QRM number is an MCT-based metric that helps to motivate MCT reduction in the organization. The QRM number is defined as follows. 100 times the base period MCT divided by the current period MCT. The base period MCT is the MCT you start with at the beginning of your improvement process. Before I give some examples, it is important to mention that the base period MCT is dependent on the goal of your project. When looking at an engineering change process, you could ask yourself the question if the clock starts ticking when a failure occurs in the field or when the sales director makes a request at a meeting. In fact, there is no right answer. The answer must be sought out of the specific project. So, for example, if you start with a department which has an average MCT of 12 days, you could get the following progress. As you can see, improvements by the team result in the MCT curve going down and the QRM number curve going up. The use of this QRM number has four advantages. First, as I just said, reducing MCT results in an increasing QRM number. In the science of performance measurement, it is well known that people react more positively to graphs going up than to graphs going down. Second, in the future, Equal reductions in lead time result in larger increases of the QRM number. When looking at the table, if the team takes two days out of its MCT in the second period, they get 20 points. However, if they take two days out of its MCT in the third period, they get 30 points. So the QRM number 
rewards the team more when it becomes more difficult to squeeze out days at a later stadium of the improvement process. Third, as MCT reduction get increasingly difficult, the QRM number continues to motivate teams. And finally, the QRM number provides a single measure that can be used through the organization regardless the type of work. To explain this, I show you another example of MCT and QRM numbers which can be seen as the calculations of another department within the same organization. In the second department, MCT also decreases. However, based on the amount of days, you are not able to see which department did a better job. Therefore, you need to look at the QRM numbers. As you can see, the second department achieves a higher QRM number with less MCT reduction. The reason for this is their starting MCT of 8 days, which is of course less than 12 days and therefore influences the ratio. When we compare both departments, we could argue that in the end, department 2 did a better job. Now it's time to explain how you should calculate the typical amount of gray space. Gray space illustrates the total time when someone is actually working on the order. An important rule here is that you only count the time needed to make one end item. So if parts are made in batches, you should not count the process time for the whole batch, but only for the process time related to one end item. Besides, the setup time for this particular item should also be included in the gray space. This is different from traditional lean. In traditional lean, setup time is seen as waste. However, these actions are needed in the process and therefore seen as gray space within QRM. So, calculate the process time of one end item and the setup time as gray space and calculate the time it takes to process the rest of the batch as white space. When you calculate the typical amount of gray space, it is important to keep in mind that you should keep it simple, just like we said in the video about data collection. It is more important to quantify the white space than to try to classify the gray space in finer detail. For example, Taking an average time of 30 minutes when you're doubting if an activity takes 15 or 45 minutes is just fine. Eventually, the percentage of white space and thus the opportunity becomes clear. Remember, if the amount of white space is approximately 85%, who cares about 2 or 3% more or less? Then, as I already said in the introduction, things become more difficult when people are simultaneously involved in a specific operation. For example, when four people are working in the assembly department and labor records indicate 40 hours of labor were used. You might think that the gray space would also be 40 hours. However, this is not true. Since people are working simultaneously, the job is done in less hours. To be precise, 10 hours if they would have worked exactly at the same moment. So, how should you calculate the gray space when you have simultaneous labor input? Again, the gray space should be calculated in calendar time. Therefore, we use the formula we introduced in the beginning of this video. MCT portion is the raw data hours times 7 divided by the weekly working hours. Imagine that four people working simultaneously at an assembly department. Let's say the working time for each person is 35 hours per week after taking into account 
breaks and lunches. And the total time of labor that were used is 20 hours. When we put this data in the formula, the gray space for assembly will be 20 raw data hours times 7, the real time, divided by 4 times 35, and these are the weekly working hours. The result is exactly one day. However, what if we make it a bit more complicated and say that people worked one day in groups of two and the other day in groups of four? You should remember now that you keep the calculation simple. An average would therefore be enough. This means you change four into three persons. Then the gray space for assembly would be 20 times 7 divided by 3 times 35. The result is 1.3 days. In the final part of this video, we will introduce Little's law. In situations when jobs or parts wait in stacking areas, warehouses or at people's desks in office, there may not be accurate data on the arrival and departure times for these jobs or parts. Little's law is a tool that can help with determining how long jobs have been waiting when this timestamp data is not readily available. If you look at a particular process, three items can be defined, namely the flow time or lead time, which is the average amount of time that an order or series is in the process. You have the flow rate, which is the average number of orders or series per day. And you have the work in progress, which is the average number of orders or series in the process. Little's law states that Flow time is the work in process divided by the flow rate. Knowing any two variables in the equation allows the calculation of the third. When a department can complete four orders a day, which is the flow rate, and there are in total 16 orders in the process, which is the work in progress, lead time will be 16 orders divided by 4 orders a day is 4 days. Next to Little's Law, you might remember that another tool that could help you are tagging sheets. Tagging sheets are introduced in the video about data collection. This brings us to the end of this video. In this video, you have learned to calculate in calendar dates and to use the QRM number. You also learned how to calculate the gray space and how to do this with simultaneous labor inputs. Finally, you are introduced to Little's Law, which assists your MCT calculation.